better position to do a few more public hearings so that people really understood what their opportunity was to speak to you. I mean, the way I understood today was just to ask questions about $3.8 million, but I, I didn't fully understand that if there was a specific project I thought would be good for our county, like the 4-H did, and that's you know my lack of education, I'd like other people to have the opportunity to come and bring ideas to you guys to, to consider before you move forward with that. Is that possible? Couldn't you push this back uh, and, and go ahead and let this current bond go ahead and complete and then be more organized and give the opportunity for more input uh, and then come back and ask us for a tax? I mean, could you trust the people to make a, a decision that way instead of forcing and rushing this through because you want to extend? Is that a possibility? And I heard your thing, I'm sorry. So uh, I, that's, I, I would be interested in hearing an answer to that. Thank, thank you for your time. Okay, our next two um, speakers are the Torrance County 4-H and R. T. Sharp. Uh, Matthew Sedil and I'm, uh, I'm the County Council Treasurer and also uh, Sansa FFA Vice President. I'm Annie Everett, I'm the County Council and I'm the Treasurer. Hi, I'm Stancy FFA Reporter. We are here today to try to convince you to letting us use the money at our fairgrounds. I believe we need a new fairground, a uh, new fairground multi-purpose building because it could bring in more, more money to our community, I think, because it will pay for itself by not only making our animals safer, because if you have pens that are removable, you can clean all that all out so it's safer for your, your, your the, next, the next kid's animals to be in there. And also, if it's all cleaned out, you, if it's a big building and everything, you can use it for other things such as, you know, we hold an FFA banquet every year and 4-H banquets. We can use it there. We can hold dances there. We can hold other things that can bring money to our community. I've been showing at the county fair since the beginning of the I'm a Charles County resident. 
that you know, rancher and a small farmer. And uh, I think everybody here knows how great the county fair is and uh, supports the 4-H uh, and FFA. And I think that project uh, should get funding. The only caveat I have is the same as a couple other people uh, mentioned in the stuff he and I guess in this group, that uh, the money should be invested in uh, property that's owned by the county. I understand the current lease with uh, the Stancia expires in uh, around 2019, and probably we could get out of that lease even earlier. But I think we should move the fair ground improvements, including a multi-use building, which I think is a fantastic idea, and will be more income for the county, to county property. Um, I uh, also support, I see we'll have several, a few million dollars out of this bond. I think uh, we should, uh, I personally receive complaints all the time about roads and see them myself. Uh, the road improvements, um, many citizens feel that they're not fairly apportioned and uh, particularly there seems to be uh, favoritism towards certain uh, parts of the county and for roads that involve some, even some uh, workers uh, on the road crew. At least that's the complaints I hear. And I think we should develop um, some money for better maintenance and, and improvement of certain roads, which could even be listed uh, on the ballot as uh, part of where the money is going so citizens will better understand where the money is going to be used. Uh, if this is done, I think we should have better management of the road department. I think we should have citizen oversight in the sense that many counties have watchdog committees which involve uh, citizens from various parts of the county to make sure that the uh, funds are fairly apportioned and, and that the improvements are uh, fairly allotted to where they're needed. Uh, so I would support also, um, besides the multi-use building, the uh, money going to the road department, not necessarily for equipment, but for actual work, um, maintenance, and improvement. I also think uh, one of the sheriff's vehicles, I thought they got some new vehicles, but I think the current uh, sheriff's department offices are, are inadequate for the importance of this position. Um, I've been in the Mertz building, haven't been, been there several times, and it's not fairly utilized. Um, the judges only come a couple of days a week, and the rest of the time is pretty much empty. And they do have holding cells there. I think the Sheriff's Department should have the opportunity to move to the Mertz building or some other facility outside of the county offices. Um, and if it, it takes money to do that, it doesn't look like it would take a lot of money to uh, redisposition their offices. I, I think the uh, New county software um, is too self-centered and it seems to be extremely expensive. And I don't understand why in our age we can't get the software problem solved in the county. It seems like various departments have different software and I don't understand why we can't get that done with the smart people we have here uh, already as county employees. Get that done for a lot less money. Uh, in terms of the uh, bond issue itself, I support what uh, Ms. Hewitt said, that, uh, that uh, I'm a member of the Foundation for Open Government. I think citizen input is extremely vital, and uh, we should do this at a general election, make the decision then. It might be later that we get the funds, but it would be uh, a better representation of what the people want. And I think that's critical. Thank you very much. Okay, our next two speakers are Lonnie Freiberger and Robert Chavez. Building, you know, the multi purpose building, I, I fully support it. 
I think that uh, that is something that the county has needed for some time, whether it be if it's legal and the county maintains the ownership of the building, whether we lease the land or not, I think that's critical. Uh, if not, then uh, I believe that it should be moved to our 20 acres that we have uh, right outside the city limits. Uh, I've spoken at length to George on uh, I do the county software, you know, pickups, uh, trucks for the uh, county sheriff and all of that was, was not eligible for the bond because it does, as Ms. Uh, Inslee had said, it has to extend past the life of the bond. But one clarification that, that might clear up, there's a lot of people thinking that uh, the municipalities will not pay into this. Is that correct? If you're in a municipality, you will not pay out of your taxes? Or is this countywide? You can give me the answer. It's county. It is, it's countywide. So in either whether you live in an incorporated uh, municipality or outside the incorporated, it's, it, it's countywide. Okay. And, and the reason that I ask for that clarification is because of uh, maybe some people being against uh, putting it on the fairgrounds. As I said, if, if we maintain an ownership, whether it's an MOU or whatever the case may be, you have to understand that the residents of Estancia, the residents of Moriarty, uh, or the residents of Willard or anywhere else pay into this, and they all show, uh, the kids all show. Uh, but there are things besides uh, rigs, sheriff vehicles, ambulances, uh, some of this other equipment that are on there, I know right now the city of Moriarty is building a fire training center. They have gotten state support. Uh, they have gotten Santa Fe County support uh, because they know the eligibility of having their firemen be able to train and not have to go down to Socorro or somewhere uh, to where we have to pay more expenses. I'm sure that the city over there as a city here can use the building that the city over there can use a couple of hundred thousand to do this. But I also want to clarify that uh, people have to understand, I believe as Mr. Ducharme said, I believe we're rushing into this. And a good example of it is we've already eliminated four on here that we said that we were going to do. I think this is something that we need to take a good look at, look at the life of whatever we're going to do, and then possibly uh, incorporate the input of the municipalities, the input of county residents more, and uh, then vote on it because I, for one, have no problem lowering my taxes, uh, especially after yesterday finding out there's a possibility of having to pay more tax on the trash. So, I'll be five minutes. We're pretty good. <laughs> My name is Robert Chavez, the mayor of the village of Willard. Uh, President, I'd like to do, I'd like to thank uh, the commission and Joy for doing, uh, getting the uh, adjoining powers agreement that you people took over the fire department as uh, a county, another county seat for the fire department. We had a lot of problems trying to get uh, people to join the fire department at, at that time, and uh, I think it's going to work a lot better than, than what it was working. So I want to thank you on that. And I'm here for the purpose of trying to uh, give support to Marcy Otis and the uh, prep board on the uh, on the other problems that they uh, what they're trying to get going here, and uh, it's important that uh, and I know that it's not easy because I've worked on so many issues in the past uh, to come up with some money to do all these projects that you have because you have so many projects there and you're gonna probably gonna have to take one at a time, but the. Uh, the one that's important, and it's, it's important for all these kids that are in the epic at the Forest Board, you know, it, uh, it's important for them that maybe it's somewhere down the line, and it's going to take time to get things going the right way, and according to the gentleman who's speaking here, it's going to take time to get that bond issue going, and so I would just encourage you to work on it, 
uh, the best you can and try to see if you can get someone to write for them uh, or what they are trying to get going. Thank you very much. Our next two speakers are Mor Moro Hall and Michael Goey. Good morning, Commissioners. I'm Moro Hall. I'm a member of the Board of Trustees of the town. Uh, I didn't come here for that, but uh, I can respond to some things. Uh, that, were, that have been said. First of all, uh, first time I went to county fair, I was about 40 years old too, and it was in Willard. And uh, at some point, the town was willing to lease to the fair board at the time uh, the property that includes our. WPA wall and the property adjacent to the to the park. Uh, and as I recall, it was for a dollar a year or something, or a dollar for 50 years. Uh, I I remember when that was done, but I I don't I don't know when it's going to expire or if it has been uh, redone. But I don't think there'll ever be any problem with that. Um, the uh, property that I believe is being spoken of, 20 acres on the way on the Allen Irish uh, Avenue or whatever it is, um, I believe that's within the town. Um, I don't see any reason to move the fairgrounds. The town of Estancia has no control over it. Uh, the lease is a long-term one and there is a memorandum of understanding is needed uh, saying who owns what when, when improvements are made. I'm sure there would be no problem with that. Uh, I don't see the advantage of moving it when we already have the facility. But I'm here uh, to support the $400,000 uh, uh, allocation within this bond issue to the county fair, and I think uh, in the, way, the direction I came from, it, I've been working with the fair to help <coughs> increase the uh, uh, art communities, uh, the growing art community in this area, and increase its uh, participation in and uh, our inclusion in the fair. And then we start talking about space and whether the rain, if we ever have rain, is going to trickle down. I understand it comes down about 20 places in the existing building. Uh, if it isn't, if, this, if a new building isn't included, uh, the county has taken over the, the fair and needs to keep, keep the uh, existing structures maintained. But uh, I'm, I'm very much in favor of it. I, uh, it. I think that if you have fairground improvements on your geo bond, you're going to have a lot of support that you wouldn't otherwise have. Uh, because some of these things are rather dull and, and you know, they're not catchy, you know, and they're needed. I mean, but uh, put the fairgrounds on there and I think it will give it a greater chance of passing. Uh, since you've had so many things taken off the list, I don't know how, what you're going to fill them up with. Obviously, you don't have enough to reach the 3.8 million. So I'm, I'm guessing that you're going to have to come up with some more questions. But I, I would speak in favor of this. And I think that, you know, the Stancy and Torrance County and the Fair Board have cooperated forever and uh, no reason to assume that that would not continue, but if there is a problem with it being in the town, then we should put a memorandum together that takes care of this problem. But thank you, and I appreciate being here. Michael Goody, I'm from Tahiti. When I first came here, I looked at I put a question mark on the fair board and listened to the people talking about the fair board and all those things. 
I would say that if you want to go for that with the bond, I think the advice beforehand to get at least a really, really long one, like 99 years or something like that with the, with the town of Estancia to make sure that that building is in such bad repair by the time the lease is over that it's not a concern. Um, when I was running for county commission, and I've said this before, roads came up, infrastructure. Your first, prior, your first responsibility is to the safety of the people. And the second is for the infrastructure, because they're related. When I drive down here, I go past some beat up trailers, people that live in things that are far worse than some of the things that you want to, you wanted in the past to upgrade. And that's kind of a shame, because basically, you should reflect the county. We're all in this together. If you're way out of line in terms of, of your comfort and your luxury of your buildings and so on the county has, then there's a little bit of a problem. And that is you, you come off as ignoring the people. And as far as catchy goes, I don't know. I mean, I was going to use a dirty word, but I won't. But basically, catchy is not necessarily good. Catchy can be good or it can't be good. But as you know, there's snow, there's snow piled all over the place. There's all kinds of road complications and arguments. And it comes, the arguments really go back to, it's not a case of is it a, is it a private road or a public road or is it used to be a red or a green, all this other stuff. It's a back, about a lack of, of, of funds to do the correct infrastructure for the county. I thought maybe somebody ought to do a, a, a study of which county has the worst roads. You got to remember that this <coughs> county is based on mud, clay. It's in the Estancia Valley, all the way from where I live in Tahiki on down. There's lots of mud and clay because a lot of this property is, is before it dried up, had lots of trees on it, lots of rivers, lots of big lake. It all turned to clay. So probably this county has a, maybe not a unique, but a problem that not every county has. It's a lot easier to drive a dirt road through sand than it is through clay. And so you've got to take it really seriously. You can't compare it to every county in New Mexico. You have to compare it to places that have lots of mud and lots of clay. We're kind of the dry version of Louisiana, pardon my humor on that. So the roads need to be taken seriously as a unique problem to this county, not in comparison to every other county, because a lot of them, particularly west here, are in sand. So that is, so I think that infrastructure needs to be the top priority. You can make it catchy if you want to, if you take the time and trouble to do it. You can dream that, and maybe your dream will come true and the voters will go for it. In terms of arts, I mean, I have to be a cynic. I'm an artist, and I think that, no, I don't think that the fair really uh, getting a lot of hoopla for the arts. I'm a little suspicious of it. Basically, the backbone of arts is galleries, it is art associations, it's stuff they're doing in Mountain Air, it's the stuff they're doing in Santa Fe and Silver City. If you really want to go there, that's where you need to go. And the town to do it probably is Mountain Air, as best you can. So I don't know if, if arts basically giving up blue ribbons and having competitions ain't where it is is in an art. And that just you know, to me, yeah, I think the animals and the fair and all that I, I agree with and that support. But as an artist, no, that's not a very good argument. Thank you. <coughs> culture here in Torrance County, uh, um, our, our rural um, lifestyle, and if it's growing kids like this, then we have to support that. So I'm, I'm all in favor of, of fairground renovations. So thank you for your time. Okay, uh, uh, 
I'm, I don't know if I'm going to put Linda on the spot or not, but uh, Linda, uh, uh, could you give us an estimate about running an uh, all-male and a uh, precinct election? I mean, rough number, I know it's kind of yeah, quick to ask you for it, but... Uh, That's all right. Linda Hamill, Prince County Clerk. Um, when I first heard about this election, it was from an email from Ms. Ansley. It was in September. I think it was the last September 30th. So when I got the email, it was about a spring election, which would be in April, according to the election law, where you can have elections uh, within a certain time of the state election. So at that time, at September, it seemed like a feasible thing to do. But as time went on and more discussion, then I had more time to research, and I gave rough estimates of 18,000 for an all-male election and 28,000 for um, a full moment election. Mm -hmm. So, but after all this discussion, I researched this further, and I'm really not comfortable with the all-male election because I've talked to Lincoln County Clerk, and we have roughly 9,120 voters in Torrance. So I would have to mail ballots to 9,120 voters. Of all of those ballots, maybe 50% would be voted and brought and uh, sent back to us. I have 4,000 some ballots that are not returned and I'm not accountable I can't account for them. I'm used to running absentee elections where a voter says, I want a ballot. We have documentation, they want a ballot, we send them a ballot, they send it back. So we are very careful about who asks for it. If these ballots are mailed out and people during this time might think, well, they're just campaign material. You can throw those in the trash. I don't like the idea of ballots that I send out not being accountable for. Other counties also pay return postage for the ballots, so I would take that into account. That could raise the 18,000 even further. It's at your discretion how we do this election, but my accountability for voting ballot for ballots, I am not comfortable with this. This would be the first time we ever have a mail election in Torrance people, there's 9,120 voters out there, all of them are not going to get notified of, they're just going to get a ballot in the mail. So, and then there's undeliverables. With absentee, when a person requests a ballot, they get the return address. Even if they're visiting somewhere else, we send it to that place. With this type of election, you just mail them out randomly to what we have on our list, a lot of those would be undeliverable also. It's a good way for us to clean up our voter files because we'll know, oh, this is undeliverable. We can try to contact these people and clean it up. But I don't feel comfortable with it all mail election after talking to other folks. Los Alamos, you saw Sharon Stone here. She's the president of the New Mexico Association of Counties. She praised this all mail elections, but they've been doing them for a long time. And I think the voters there are more, I don't know, maybe they're more aware of more serious about their voting. Not that I'm saying that Torrance County is not serious, but we're, we've never had an all-male election, so people would be a little confused about that process, unless we educate them. And I'm sure it's within the law to do this, and the, and the 